Welcome back everyone to GGN. Uh, this is part two. This is my website as well, ggnonline.com. Um, also on YouTube is DDarko2012 and DDarko2013. There's a poll up here. Uh, what are the chances of a stage alien invasion space for threat during the 2012 London Olympics? I'm not sure if you guys heard the latest news. Uh, I remember reporting on this before, which was what? Um, basically the surface to air missiles along with SAS. Um, special forces and hideaway bunkers and increased troop presence and traffic wardens are getting police powers. Uh, I guess they're going to have snipers dangling from helicopters, everything. So uh, that may be the NATO summit, but the NATO summit is kind of sounding, uh, uh, looking a lot uh, like the London Olympics in the way of security. So who knows what's going to be happening here. Uh, you don't have to believe in aliens to uh, go along with this. Uh, uh, notion of you know having a false flag attack so that they can get your money to build up space weapons so i've seen people in the comment board say well i you know there are no aliens there are no aliens that's it we're the only ones in the entire galaxy well anyways long story short these people that are running the planet whether they believe in aliens or not there's a, they got a lot of people believing in it, and they're putting it out in the media. They're putting it out in video games. They're increasing the um, the issue of extraterrestrials and um, the planet fighting and unifying um, to fight this foreign threat. So it doesn't really matter whether you believe in aliens. Uh, they're pushing this agenda so of building up uh, the space weapons. And basically what they're trying to do is just, you know, Venture out, conquer the universe, right? They've already conquered this planet. If uh, you haven't got the memo yet, this is a prison planet. Uh, I don't even know if you could actually escape it if you wanted to. If you build your own uh, little um, machine or mechanism or vessel to get out of here, they probably would. Uh, <laughs> they probably uh, would. You know, you'd be taken off in some kind of wormhole, and then you'd be cut off in a wormhole by the by the people that run this planet, saying ah ah ah, <laughs> you know. So, um, yeah, you can go in there and check it out. So, I'm not sure if it's going to happen this summer, but <laughs> it's looking a lot more like it is. And let's not forget the holographic technology that they, uh, they've they been promoting. You just had Tupac within the past 30 days, the hologram, and they're talking about holograms. So, uh, Tahikistan, Russia inch closer to deal on troop presence. That's right. Uh, I covered the Mideast in the first section, the first video, and then now I'm going to move into Asia. So it says here that Russia and Tajikistan are getting closer to a deal that would extend the presence of Russian troops in the Central Asian nation beyond 2014, Russia's foreign minister said. And it goes on, it says that it is expected to uh, lease for the three Russian-controlled garrisons in the former Soviet, Soviet neighboring Afghanistan will be extended by 49 years, a prospect first floated by outgoing Russian President uh, Medvedev. This was an article that uh, I had, and I don't think I got to. It's from April 19th, 2012. Central Asia Border Security Pledge Interior Ministries uh, or ministers from Europe and Central Asia vowed in Vienna this week to work more closely to tighten border security throughout the region. It says here, international members of the Central Asia Border Security Initiative agreed Tuesday to step up efforts to stem the flow of illegal immigrants, terrorists, and illegal drugs through the region of time uh, at a time when pending withdrawal of NATO forces in Afghanistan is likely to present new security challenges so it's all in the name of uh, security efforts to uh, for drugs and terrorists right so but we know that it's not that uh, for that reason I mean you can simply go by each one and say the government has a monopoly in drug dealing and kidnapping and terrorist activity and uh, bringing in the flow of illegal immigrants so what it has to do with is Russia and China so, you know, the West is going to try to secure the little, little countries like Israel um, with Azerbaijan and arming them. And uh, you have Poland and then Georgia is a big kind of, uh, um, it can go either way, basically. Uh, wild card, that's the word I was looking for. China-Russia relations reach new heights. So I'm not sure if you guys caught this story about the U.S. Uh, moving 9,000 Marines from Okinawa. Um, I the way this story is going to, this news is, is going to be presented is, oh, well, you know, the Japanese, they just wanted the United States out of there. They, you know, I don't know if you've been aware of this, but they've been having these constant conflicts 
uh, between the United States, who has marine, uh, mostly air bases in Japan, and the Japanese government, because the people don't want them there. They're out there to protest. I remember when I was actually there in Iwakuni and Okinawa, there'd be protesters right outside the fence. So they, they didn't want us there then. They don't want us there now. But, you know, they could have removed them whenever they wanted to. But it's just kind of unusual that they're removing them now when they're putting U.S. Marines in Australia and they just uh, increased the number of um, uh, U.S. forces in Australia as well, along with building up this whole theater in South Asia. So moving on here, it goes on. It says Japan and the U.S. have announced 9,000 U.S. Marines stationed at Okinawa will be shifted to Australia and Guam. So see, they're going to Australia. They're going to Guam and Hawaii. So right what I was uh, basically saying. So here's the bullshit. And the move Washington hopes will ease sometimes fractious relations with Japan's. <laughs> yeah, it's pulling out, right? So uh, you remember when the Japanese lost, <laughs> their entire everything was was banned. So, I mean, the only thing that they had flying over there while well, we had F-18s out there practicing, uh, you know, exercises was like these safety emergency, uh, basically SAR search and rescue planes. And they'd float the same plane uh, over and over every day. <laughs> you know, all day. So uh, it says here, the foreign and defense ministers of the two countries say the move is, is to cope with the changing security environment in the Asia-Pacific region. So then they kind of get to the cut to the truth right there. And then we have this. This has been slowly happening as well. Uh, Marine Corps reduces number, not effectiveness. And of course, that's a nice PR statement. This is from their actual website. Officials with the headquarters, um, Marine Corps Manpower and Reserve Affairs uh, conducted an informational brief at the Camp Pendleton's Bulldog box office regarding the drawdown of active duty Marines beginning October 2012. It was talking about Marines reducing the force uh, from 202,000 uh, to an end strength of 182,000 over the course of the next four years and how to prepare for the change. Kind of interesting, right? Because they were used in, uh, what, Mogadishu and that in Africa and then used in the Middle East and uh, Afghanistan that with the drawdown we're returning to our Navy Marine Corps roots of being an amphibious Marine Corps. Well, where do you think those guys are going to be sent? Hmm? Moving on here, 11 soldiers, one civilian killed in rebel attacks in the Philippines. And these patches, they actually look like those little patches that I showed in that video about on the, um, the video of a cache of weapons being found between the U.S. and Mexican officials on the southwest border. Tons of ammo and all that stuff, right? We were talking about the slow invasion of the United States, possibly. And these were the tight patches that I saw. So, and it goes on and says here that the rebels attacked three vehicle army convoy. Uh, this was last Wednesday. So this is interesting. These are the communist rebels, right? But you're not going to hear that those type stories in the mainstream media. Um, next up, we have China newspaper warns of small scale war with the Philippines says here one of China's most popular newspapers has warned of a potential small-scale war between Beijing and Manila as a result of their standoff and it goes on it says in the area uh, is known internationally Global Times uh, published its Chinese and English edition said over the weekend that China should be prepared to engage in small-scale war uh, at sea with the Philippines the US triples military aid to Philippines in 2012 the United States will nearly triple its military funding for the Philippines this year says here, uh, as the tensions rise with China over disputed islands, talking about the South China Sea. Moving on, letter signals U.S. may sell Taiwan new fighter jets. It was suggested in a new government look into reports. Moving on, here we have Taiwan, or Taiwan, sets up airborne unit for contested Spratly Islands. So, it says here, Taiwan's defense ministry said on Wednesday that it formed a special airborne unit capable of scrambling to the contested Spratly Islands in just hours and tensions, or as tensions in the South China Sea are mounted. Yeah, I don't know if you remember, they actually have like a, um, they were doing an exercise, uh, Taiwan was a mock exercise of an invasion by China or something like that. But somebody made a good point about <laughs> that the invasion would be coming from Japan uh, to China and be most, mostly people fleeing uh, out of the country due to uh, basically those reactors just all going out and the country being uh, uninhabitable so I guess they could kind of point to who was behind it right and they'd just be sitting there mowing them down possibly when they come in carrier killer program goes ahead it says here that between seven and 
uh, 11 500-ton stealth corvettes, each equipped with eight anti-ship cruise missiles and designed to sink carriers, are to be built by 2014. So it's already being hailed as Taiwan's carrier killer, and uh, the Chinese didn't like the U.S. Uh, basically uh, making arms contracts with Taiwan, Taiwan, and that was, I think, a couple years ago. USC South America is possible China counter. When I saw this article, I was just like, you got to be kidding me. I see it's not even up there, I guess. But uh, yeah, a complete joke. You know, you know, Leon Panetta going on there. Come on, South America. I, we know you hate our guts. Uh, why don't you come and help us uh, go over to the Chinese uh, theater in the South China Sea? I remember this Bolivians protesting road constructions. Uh, you have in Peru. Uh, they're mining, uh, basically mining protests. Venezuela, they don't like them too much. Colombia doesn't like them too much. So I was kind of surprised to see that article. But it was pure propaganda for the yahoos. It says here, Russia's military brass threatens preemptive strike if NATO goes ahead with missile plan. Russia's top military officer has threatened to carry out a preemptive strike on the U.S.-led NATO missile defense facilities in Eastern Europe if Washington goes ahead with this controversial plan to build a missile shield. The U.S. missile defense plans in Europe have been one of the touchiest subjects in U.S.-Russia relations for years. And, yeah, it's Eastern Europe, and um, you kind of move into the Central Asia uh, area. And like I've mentioned before, that's, that's kind of the area where it's coming down to, where you have the, the United States, uh, Israel, the U.K., and that basically the West, and uh, China and Russia just kind of fending for the last resources and of pitting these countries they're they're all kind of just puppet countries i remember when i made a, a video about kurzakstan all about kurzakstan when i first started ggn it's like four set videos and people got someone got offended in the comment board like oh they're not a puppet state for the new world order i'm like oh, well okay whatever but uh you know everything from their flag to the representatives is uh basically they're pro-west i mean they're not really there for themselves or their people they're either pro-west which you know or they're pro-russia or China. U.S. claims unprecedented success in test for new fuel source. Now, this is interesting, but it goes on and says, could the future of cleaner fossil fuels really be frozen crystals now trapped in the ocean sediment and under permafrost? Arctic permafrost. I didn't remember this article. Well, you don't remember it. I don't, I don't know if you do, if you saw it, but I've been meaning to get to this. April 24th, top of the world, NATO rehearses for war in the Arctic. So, I wonder for what? The Western campaign for global dominance has reached the top of the world. That's right. So they're going to, as they're debating over climate change, they're preparing for a new kind of cold war in the Arctic, anticipating that rising temperatures will open up a treasure trove of resources and long-dreamed sea lanes. It goes on and says they're taking place in the high north under the official label of Joint Norwegian-NATO Partnership for Peace endeavor, which including preparedness drills against terrorist threats, mass demonstrations, i.e. breakdown of uh, the economy and that civil unrest and spies coming in from the cold so the russians have what created their own special arctic troops that's right i'm sure they already had it but for the arctic the russian authorities have announced the formation of two dozen special border guard units in the arctic the strengthening of the arctic borders will be imp implemented sorry in the next eight years the Defense Ministry promised to patch all the holes in the Arctic border formed in the post-Soviet uh, years. It says here that the military presence will be strengthened by ground troops. So this is a New York Times uh, piece amid protests. See, they got to put that there. Amid protests, uh, you know, they're, they're golden boy Obama. You don't think there were protests when he was coming into office and every other shill puppet that they put in there as well? Putin returns to presidency in Russia. The defense minister returned to Mr. Putin a black suitcase that contains the controls to a vast nuclear arsenal. And I have this to leave you with. Um, Vladimir Putin, Russia, issues international arrest warrant for Rothschilds and Soros. And it goes here, Vladimir Putin, now in full control of Russia's prime minister, wishes to build a strong Christian nation. And the televised Christmas message on January 7, 2008, you can go in there and says... Uh, but basically, that uh, the church is going to continue promotion of moral values in society. I think they're actually putting up a ban against uh, gay propaganda. Basically, not against gays. It's just people that go out there and promote, like in kindergarten, like over here in the West, they're promoting homosexuality, they're promoting all this crazy sh crap that's going on. It's confusing young people. Uh, they want to actually ban that. But it goes on and it says, Russia will make the U.S. reflect upon what they allowed the Rothschilds to do to their country. It says, when you see protesters against Putin now, keep in mind, it's probably staged by the Rothschild trying to control Russia once again.
Unbelievable Russian oppositions confab at U.S. Embassy. Russian opposition caught filing into U.S. Embassy in Moscow. So, uh, protesters for hire. Thank you.